Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. This is part two of my estate sale finds uh, that I had on a recent purchase. It was advertised on Facebook Marketplace. And uh, well, I went there looking for a fishing reel, came back with, well, the, basically the whole estate uh, because I found a strategy that would enable me to purchase the reel that I wanted to, which was a, a Newell reel and recover my investment by, uh, well, finding homes and finding ways to give the tackle and other things a second chance. Well, this part of the video is about the tackle that I found. And, well, we can continue with that strategy. You want to think about pricing, uh, personal use, if you're going to use it. Well, how much you don't have to take out of your pocket uh, when you go fishing or to stock your tackle boxes. Or if you're going to sell it, what the, uh, the used market would be for that. As I mentioned in the, uh, the previous video, the owner of this equipment, I uh, took very good care of it. It wasn't one of these situations where well, you just find a box of rusted hooks and, and some old uh, lures that have pretty much seen their, their best usage in, in the past. This one was really taken care of and that's one of the things that well, convinced me to buy the whole lot as opposed to just buying the individual piece and try and find a way to offset that or trade up to uh, get that wheel. Well, we're going to uh, take just a moment to ask you to subscribe to my channel. If you do like my channel, if you do like real repair, if you do occasionally like to see things that are flea market finds or estate sale finds, if you like to learn a little bit about uh, how you can uh, do some of these things, repair reels, understand how the reels were made and so on, then I would encourage you to subscribe to my channel. Well, let's just start right off. There's a whole group of, of these tackle kits, and I suspect that if I was trying to figure it out, there's probably a value just in the, the plastic boxes alone. Well, tackle has gone crazy lately in terms of pricing, but here I have a series of uh, spoons. That's a nice example of one here. This is the Acme Thunderbolt. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, at least eight of those in here. And if you just put a, a basic pricing on, if you were to go to buy one of these, I suspect that the pricing is, is well beyond what the fellow paid for him back in the day. But these things are probably selling for three, four, five dollars each. Think about that. You've got six of them here. Uh, so probably thirty dollars by itself. You have a big MEPS spoon. I think this is MEPS. Kind of looks like MEPS. It's the MEPS uh, Aguila number five. These are big bass spoons. And uh, well, I got two of those. And I have a couple of uh, other spinners. I got another um, Acme Thunderbolt in there, another MEPS. And uh, so if you just were trying to figure out, well, what's this thing worth if I was to take out of pocket expense, the out of pocket expense to purchase these, that'd probably be 40 or 45 or 50 dollars, I don't know, somewhere in there. But not, not, uh, not a, a bad lot just for that. Okay. Second one up is, uh, let's see, it seems like a box of weights. It's a box of weights. And these, these are the bigger um, split shots, probably for a little bit deeper water and a series of um, three-way swivels with the little connector. I think this fellow was a fly tire and I think these are personally made. These are kind of neat little things. They, they kind of have little cotton balls on the end of them. It's kind of hard to see. Maybe, maybe I don't want to get hooked, but he's made a, an effort there to do that. And I think these probably would be great for crappie. Just these little shakers and the like. And, uh, well, I can't wait to put them on a pole and give them a try. I've never seen one like that. And uh, not sure what it is. Another box with a tackle in it. We have some standalone hooks. We have those little cotton ball type things, and we have some more swivels. And, uh, well, in this case, I think these are dead weights. We have a little hook on them. It feels like there's a, a series of uh, split shot in here. They kind of replicate to a worm. They dead end on this side. So I uh, think that we're going to bring this one down. We'll put it on one side of the swivel, let that sink, and then have your your lure, your bait coming out from the other side. If anybody knows anything more on that, let me know. Well, if you have any questions on these types of things, if you're interested in uh, learning more about this stuff, or if you just uh, have a curiosity about anything that I'm showing, then uh, I would certainly uh, ask you to put that into the comments section. 
And in that comment section, uh, ask your question, I will try to respond to you. Well, we always try to date these things. And one of the things, this is a local, was a local sports shop. It's probably been out of business about 10 to 15 years now. So it gives you an idea of the time that these things have sat idle or, uh, well, at least uh, the time that the box was purchased. And then I would assume that the fellow was fairly active after that. Again, another uh, nice Plano tackle box here. And again, some more. Uh, this one's a different type of a fur setup. We have the requisite box of Band-Aids. I would challenge anybody to find that box today. <laughs> I'm not an antique person, but I'll bet you it's uh, quite some time since the Band-Aids were sold like this. We have another tackle box here. These, I love these boxes by themselves. They uh, enable you to just uh, put that into your, your pocket or your Creole or whatever and uh, kind of walk through that. Again, oh, more of the same in terms of spoons. And this one is a uh, little Clio. And again, the, the equipment that uh, is here is well cared for. You're not finding rusted, uh, used up lures that were just hanging around. And another box of these, these weighted pieces. Okay, well, let's get over to some of the bigger stuff then. Again, all neatly organized, and that's a nice thing to see when you're considering buying things. And uh, this, these caught my eye when I, in the ad, but I, I could live without them. But then again, they were nice to see. Again, a nice assortment of hooks and the like. And some little, uh, they're not the devils, but they look like the devils. And, uh, okay. Here we go. Here's a bunch of saltwater stuff, which is appropriate for us. This I would probably call the... Um, uh, the local pieces that I would fish with personally. We have a lot of poppers. These are Yozuri's. They're, uh, well, I know today they're $13, $14 each. These are these could be Rapalas. They're, uh, can't, I can't see a name on there, but they could be the Rapalas. Those swimming uh, fish could be bombers. All, a host of the jigs. This is the crocodile, very popular here in terms of uh, fishing from surf. Some uh, Eel type arrangements, the rattlers. Uh, I don't know what that one's doing in this box. It's more appropriate for bass. A couple of jigs. These are, this one has shown its wear. This is uh, likely to be a. Um, hmm, trying to think. All right, a couple of Castmasters, big version. If you had to buy that one today, it's probably a ten ten dollar piece. One right behind it. A couple of smaller Castmasters. I love the Castmasters in the, the one eighth and one quarter ounce size for fresh water. They do very well. Another crocodile. A Hopkins. You got a little bit of everything in this box. All cared for. Most of those you could take fishing today. One more box here. So again, on the value of that, that's probably almost what I paid for the, the thing by itself. And then we have another box with the bigger stuff. Spro, that's what I was trying to think of. Spro. It's a Spro uh, jig on the bigger side. A lot of these crocodile ones, beautiful uh, examples of heavy spoons that you can throw from surf. Nice plugs that uh, we would use for striped bass here. Another Spro. A host of these little uh, rattlers. This one's going to go deep. When you have that big bill, it's going to go deep. Not quite sure what we have in here from herders. And then a couple more of the, the bombers and rapalas and the like. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, about fifteen, sixteen lures in here. Even if you were conservative and said four dollars a piece, well, you're up in the seventy-five to, to ninety dollar range. So that's the tackle that I found. We already went through the twelve reels that uh, came along with the sale. And the last thing I'll, I'll focus on will be, uh, well, I'll call it miscellaneous. The fellow is a fly tire, and uh, included with that is a group of fly tying equipment, and, uh, well, a whole host of bags that I've yet to open. So you'll be surprised, as I am, as we go into that segment.
our first responders and essential personnel. Thank you for all it is that you do to keep us safe. To everyone, enjoy the art of uh, fishing real service, repair, that a little bit of the history of them. And if you get a chance to search flea markets and estate sales, garage sales, yard sales, whatever they're called in your area, uh, take take the time to go do that. You'll never, never regret it. And sometimes you'll be surprised at just what you can find when you least expect it. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.